Despite all the challenges that we face, good things are also happening. For example, just after the Good Morning Britain interview, we fired out a tweet asking people for their selfies to show the world what non-binary people look like. We're just gonna have a nice day today, hopefully, and uh, be able to try and... Yeah, we need to have a look at social media and see what the hell's going on. It was about midnight and we were just on the phone. I was like, Fox, let's just go to bed and sleep now. And then in the morning, we'll come back to it. So yeah, we're gonna take a look. Let's see what's happening. So we've got 99 plus notifications, which is a lot. All right, wow. So got lots of pictures coming through. Oh my God, there's... Yeah, so much. That was an hour ago and I've already like scrolled quite a lot. So let's just try and get back to, what was it, 10 hours ago? Yeah. And just see what we've got going on and just try and draw. My God, there's so much. It's unbelievable. This is what happens when things go viral. So cool. <laughs> so this is um, two hours already in and we're just like, and these are just my notifications. This isn't even me looking into the, no, the, the this is what non-binary looks like, the actual hashtag. No. Yeah. Wow, oh, this is um, seriously powerful, and I think that this is a, a really great example of how social media can yeah. can completely help. We can still manage to make an impact, and together yeah. we're obviously way stronger. And it's so cool to be able to see yeah. people's faces. That's great. Non-binary cutie puck here. This hashtag is just so beautiful. That's yeah. so nice. <laughs> To me, this feels like we're at a, a point in our um, understanding or that the, the world's understanding of non-binary issues mm -hmm. that we haven't been at before. Like We just haven't been having these conversations. No. This is so great. It's so nice to see people that I recognize and people that I don't know at all. That yeah. I, uh, are kind and from of... all over the world as well. Yeah, look, we've got Victor from, from uh, Poland, Poland yeah. as well, looking fabulous. There also seems to be a lot of um, these sort of haters that are trying to take over the hashtag. Yeah. But they're just being very unsuccessful because there's just so many people posting. It's just so extreme. It's just a, re it's a reply to someone's photo. Right. And ridiculous because yeah. we have, we're totally dominating this hashtag. And I think because the whole interview just exploded uh, the media basically because it was such an aggressive interview. Yeah. And Piers was so intense and he just wasn't there to listen or be educated at all. But we sort of kept our cool. Yeah. And I think that really showed, you know, him losing his shit and us just keeping it together and just trying our best to explain to this person that didn't want to listen. Yeah, but, exactly. And I think that's why people are upset about it. And that's why people are like... Like, let's show everyone yeah. what it's actually like to be non-binary. Because yeah. he had really weird ideas. He was like, well, if Fox and all are non-binary, then why? why do they dress like a man and a woman? Exactly. <laughs> we immediately thought, oh, this is a really teachable moment because yeah. that is the question. People ask that all the time. Oh, well, if you're non-binary, why do you look like that? And there's obviously so many preconceived ideas of what non-binary non looks like. And yeah. we're not just, like you said before, actually, we're not just all androgynous blobs like yeah. we actually do have the right to express ourselves because gender identity and yeah. gender expression are two different things and I mean already we have women who present as masculine and we have men who present as feminine mm -hmm. so why do we think that non-binary people have to be androgynous it doesn't make any sense to me yeah that's true yeah of course because women can wear masculine clothing it doesn't yeah. take away from them identifying as a woman and no. vice versa as well I'm just so overwhelmed. I mean, like all of these comments, I just, I look forward to trawling through it, but yeah. I think it's going to probably take a few hours. So. <laughs> You're going to just have to be like, 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 tweet, like, comment, like, just like, it's amazing. It's so yeah. cool. So yeah. How wonderful is that? Yeah. High five. Just around the time that we finished filming for this documentary, the government announced that they would be reforming the GRA, or the Gender Recognition Act. This has led to a vile and horrendous media onslaught around trans people, where day after day we see demonizing articles that misrepresent and trivialize our lives. Even trans children are under attack, where bigots try to mask their transphobia with fear-mongering tactics and disingenuous concern. But it goes beyond just the media, and we truly are living in an epidemic of violence against trans people, with increased hate crimes and violence, particularly against trans feminine people and trans people of color. 
we're living in pivotal times, and this is one of the many tipping points for trans people in the UK. The GRA centres around allowing trans people to get a new birth certificate, and if the proposed changes go through, the process will be made much more humane. It will create a legal process where people sign a statutory declaration as opposed to needing a diagnosis from a healthcare professional. Following on from the government's announcement to reform the GRA, they released data from an LGBT survey alongside opening a public consultation about the GRA. The survey is one of the biggest data collections of the experiences of LGBT people in the UK and beyond. So we just came from a, a meeting with some people who worked on the LGBT survey that's just been released. Out of the about 14,500 trans people have responded, over half or about 52% were actually non-binary. And I think that when we talk about trans issues, non-binary issues sometimes get forgotten or not talked about. Non-binary as a category has really blossomed into the public visibility over, I'd say, the last five years, mm -hmm. maybe a little longer. Yeah. But with that visibility comes risk and comes discrimination and stigma. And one third of non-binary people have experienced verbal harassment, according to these survey results. Harassment affects people's lives in different ways. So three quarters of non-binary people feel that they can't be open about their gender identity in their day-to-day -day lives, whether it's employment or school. When they are actually open about it, they also face opposition because I think about three quarters of everybody who said they were open to their teachers at school experienced that they didn't understand them. There was a lack of understanding what non-binary is and how to cater to their needs. It underlines a clear need for non-binary recognition and to recognize that they have specific needs, which might be slightly different to other trans people, such as trans men and trans women, even though they do intersect in many ways. And although the conversation is about non-binary recognition right now, that means thinking about, do we really need gender on this piece of information? Is gender really necessary here? Who is this for? Why are we collecting this information? And so with the potential for the law to be degendered to some extent. There was a recent court case uh, championed by Christy Ellen Kane, where the judge recognized that not being able to identify as non-binary was a violation of one's human rights uh, art under Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights. So in some ways we can look at non-binary recognition in this country as inevitable. And it's just the case of when as opposed to if mm. at this point. Mm. The we are the gift. We are valid. We are beautiful. There is nothing wrong with us. Quite the opposite. Everything is right with us. Non-binary people being accepted as who they are won't affect anyone in a negative way, but it will make our lives better and we can truly be ourselves. We're hopeful for the future and we know that change will come. Non-binary people are not going away and we hope that soon we will be recognized both socially and legally. Only time can tell what comes to pass, but we are certain that we can and will overcome this. But in order to do that, we need help and solidarity from our allies, our friends and family. In the future, we are going to look back on this time. Which side of history do you want to be on? <laughs>